G'day guys and welcome to another episode of The Vibe. And sadly, this is our last episode for the series. Oh, but don't worry, we have a fantastic set of stories ahead for you. That's right, Simon. We'll be speaking to the Oh My Guy and seeing some of the funniest bits from the segment over the year. Plus, we're also going to be talking to Drew and Tom, who are a couple of talented artists through Scope Music. Wow, and we catch up with Warwick Church of Christ, who have some fantastic youth events on, Ignite and Pulse. Okay, here I am in the office of my good friend Steve Bradfield. Now Steve oversees all the uh, youth events that happen here at Warwick Church of Christ. G'day Steve, how you going mate? Not too bad, how are you? Oh yeah, I'm alright. So, why don't you just give us a background about what events actually happen at Warwick? Well, um, on Friday nights we have a youth group called Ignite uh, from 7 till 9pm. Uh, run by Azzy Hall and, and his team and basically they just go out and do all sorts of things, go out different places and they get on a bus and you know enjoy themselves, do that sort of thing. And then um, on Sunday nights we have uh, our new Pulse service and uh, that's, that's fantastic. We have like heaps of youth um, and uh, we do all sorts of issues. We talk about all different sorts of youth issues. We have great music party atmosphere and um, yeah, basically we try anything to, to reach the youth and, and talk on their related issues. But, um, and then we have um, on a Thursday night we have uh, Whiz Kids and that's for primary age uh, kids and we have like, programs, games, activities, um, Bible stories and, that, and that's fantastic. That's, that's firing along really well. And uh, we also have basketball as a big thing in our, in our church, sports ministry, Fortune and Leisure, run by Mandy Harley, and uh, she's doing a great job there with uh, about 13 teams at the moment, so um, sports is quite a big thing. And then uh, we also have something called Seven Evangelism, which is um, uh, teams of youth and, and older people as well going out to the community doing uh, free community service projects like uh, backyard blitzes, uh, we've given thousands of cans of free drinks away. Um, we just recently, last week, went to the skate park and gave out free drinks. And it's basically just to show Christ's love in a practical way. So we're trying to get the youth to um, really be proactive with their faith and get out there, not just talk about it. So I guess it's and um, yeah, and there's also things like small groups um, we have there, and we, which we call Excels, and. Um, yeah, they're going really well as well, so it's good. Little Jimmy's got a mind of his own, he doesn't like to wear cool clothes. With the labels that well known, he just likes to be himself. All the boys, they laugh at him, but they all tell him that he's weird. And that he isn't cool enough to roam with the herd. But Jimmy ain't no sheep, and God loves him that way. Not a creepy, just has courage to say I am who I am, and what you say means nothing. It's God who touches in the end. His love is the one thing that is real. Oh yeah. Now Jimmy has a girl, and she knows the Lord as well. She's no try hard teeny bopper, wearing spice girl shoes. Boys they say she's ugly. They themselves wonder why all their girlfriends ran away for every other guy. Well, what another fantastic program for the youth of Perth. And now we have our segment of Street Talk with Kimbo. <coughs> Hi, Kim. Hey. <coughs> hey um, what's, what's, um, what are you wearing? Actually, this is uh, some, of the, some of the costumes that Jesus' followers used to wear you know, back in really? the old days. We're just trying to get jiggy with it, you know, sort of wear oh. the costume that they wore. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, well what's happening with Street Talk this week? Well, we're heading out once again and uh, asking whether uh, what people believe Jesus was, whether he was a liar yeah. or lunatic or was he Lord, who he claimed to be. Mm. Yeah, so it's an interesting topic. Very interesting topic. Mm. Let's just hope that a train doesn't come because I don't want to get run over, basically. So, we're in Fremantle trying to find out the big, big question because it's the last episode and that is, Jesus claimed to be God, right? So we're going to try to find out what Frio thinks, whether they reckon that he was simply a liar, was he a lunatic, 
I was plain and simply who he said he be, who was to be, and that was the Son of God. So let's go find out before I get run over by a train. All right, ta-ta. Jesus said he was God, right? We want to try to find out uh, whether you believe he was a liar, a lunatic, or was he plain and simply who he claimed to be? He, he, who he's claimed, I think he's who he claimed to be because, um, like Jesus is special and he wouldn't lie to people. And how about you? Yeah, same. Same, same? A liar. liar. I don't believe it. Yeah, you don't no. believe it? And how about you? Do you reckon he was a liar, a lunatic, or was he what he said to be? I reckon he was a liar. Yeah. Any, do you think, any reasons why you think possibly he may have been a liar? Because, I don't know, yeah, sure. I just don't really believe right. it. Uh, he's who he's meant to be. Yeah. He speaks the truth. Yeah. He's right. the man. He's the man. Cool. Yeah. We've got four guys here and we have Luca first. Um, what do you think about this issue, mate? Um, I think he was there. Oh, I think he was a bit of a lunatic yeah. and most of his stuff is true. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I reckon Jesus was alright. Yeah, he's, I don't know, weirdo sometimes. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's just another person. People think he's some godly person, but he's just some dude. Yeah. I reckon um, he was just like one of the leaders today. You know, people follow him, yep. and he was just like, a lot of people followed him, still do. Yep. I don't know, he's a leader. <laughs> he's not bad. Okay, and what what, your, what are your guys' names again? Genevieve, Bay. Okay, Genevieve. Um, what what do you think about this topic? I would say that Jesus wasn't a liar or a lunatic, but I'm inclined to think he was pretty extreme in his beliefs and his attitude. Yeah, no, I'd have to agree with her. I mean, really, there's obviously there's no benefit in to other people what he was doing. So it's not like he's trying to make a profit out of it or anything. So I mean, whoops. Um, yeah, I'd have to agree with her, I guess. Okay, here we have Lucy. Lucy, what do you think about this topic? Well, I think that Jesus is just a man who was sent to earth to do good things for people, and I guess everyone has their own opinion, but that's just mine. And, um, yeah, I think that um, he was just a good man, and he helped a lot of people. So, yeah. My belief, really, is that, well, Jesus was alive. He is part of history. Um, Obviously a real person and all that, but as to whether he was God or not, I'm not sure that that was the truth. I wouldn't dismiss the possibility that Jesus indeed is the Son of God, um, because I think there's far more than we know. Um, I don't. I'm an agnostic myself, but I uh, I, I waver continually. But I I don't see why not. Tough question, Frio, but you've done a really good job to answer it. In the end, it really does come down to this, that you need to find out all the facts before trying to, you know, figure out the answer. So it's back to you guys in the studio. Thanks for that, Kim. It's been fantastic over the series to hear what young people think about various issues. And if you have any questions or comments about anything at all that you've seen, feel free to drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you at thevibe2002 at hotmail.com. Well, Simon, now it's time for us to head over to Scope Music and speak to Drew and Tom about their latest album. Mercy. Mercy. Here we are on a beautiful, lovely, idyllic setting right here on the shores and of uh, Lake Munga. Seen a few ducks and things and swans and things. And, oh, and we happen to have here Drew and Tom, or Tom and Drew, doesn't matter. They're a, an upcoming band that, uh, if you may, haven't heard of them, you soon will. So, firstly guys, what's your full names and where do you come from? My name's Drew Griffith. My name's Tom O'Halloran. We're both from this town. Yeah. And how long have you guys been going for? We've been together about, I reckon about two years. Three years. Maybe three now. Goodness me. Time flies. We've maybe. known each other for quite a while, I guess. So what's it been like recording your first album? Uh, well, recording the first album, the scope was good. It was uh, we were in the studio for three months. It was a long time. We had Paul Mabry producing. Uh, he plays drums for the Jive Express, and he's a very talented fella. And so he was uh, there. We just, you know, it was great. I mean, this uh, we got to meet a lot of people. We got to play with a lot of people. Um, it's also recording an album is 
has its difficulties. You, you know, it's quite, it's long hours and uh, it can be arduous mm. at times, but it's also very rewarding as well. So I guess three months uh, was, it was kind of full on. Yeah, yeah. It's really good though, seeing the tunes that, you, that we kind of played together uh, suddenly take shape in the studio, I guess. They would sort of come alive and uh, really expand, I guess. And we had um, another couple of guest musos on the album who really added a lot to that sound. Um, a guy called Dishan, who played great bass on a lot of the tracks. And we had cello, um, Emma White played cello, and got a great jazz double bass player by the name of Pete Jevons played as well. And, and there's really nice colours there as well that those guys added, so. So you guys been heard on radio? Yes. We've been, we've uh, played on a couple of radio stations, um, Sunshine FM, uh, 92.1 RTR, Radio Frio, um, Triple J, and I'm not sure if there's any others. Tell us about Triple J, like when you appeared on there, that, how'd that happen? Yeah, okay, Triple J was live, it was, we played four tunes and we did it in the ABC studios and I remember the most fantastic part of that whole night was uh, the lady who kind of did the, the live recording took us into the big, big sound studio where they, um, where they rehearsed the West Australian Symphony Orchestra and they had the full choir and the full symphony and they were in the middle of this rehearsal and she just opened these two double doors and said, have a listen to that and we just walked in and I just went, oh. That's an amazing experience. Uh, and then, yeah, we went into the other studio and we recorded four songs for Triple J. And it was, um, it was good. It was interesting. It was fun. It was, uh, it was good. Yeah. So, just finally, what are you trying to achieve through your music? What's, what's your message? Well, you know, I mean, essentially, the world would be a much uh, different place if if people knew how much God was loving them. And uh, so, we basically take use music to, to tell people uh, or remind people and to share with people um, that very fact that, that God loves us and uh, that it's a benevolent universe and that uh, that we're accepted and, and loved and created by a loving beautiful God so that's what we use music to do so well thanks a lot guys for your time I really appreciate it yeah. and uh, have a fantastic day thank you very much thanks mate cheers the vibe They call these chicken in a biscuit, but I don't know how they fit a chicken in this biscuit. Please excuse Simon, and welcome back to The Vibe. Yeah, well, we're going to head down to Rivervale Church and check out and see what the youth do on a Friday night. I still don't get it. Welcome to the Rivervale Youth Group. As you can see, we've got stacks going on, heaps of kids, lots of activities, some loud music, and a stack of fun for the night. Settle in. What brought me in tonight, um, the good people and all the good activities that we play. <laughs> what, 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 what brings you along to Eastcrip tonight? Um, to meet new people and the activities and stuff like that. Ah, getting out in the world and, and seeing who's out there? Yes, we are. Excellent, excellent. Uh, have from some fun, get out of the house and enjoy the company of everyone. What's your aim week in, week out for, for the youth group, for you specifically? For me specifically, I want to see uh, just a whole heap of new kids come along each week. 
and um, just giving uh, or having the opportunity to share the gospel with them and um, just share them a little bit of love that um, Jesus has given us and we just want to pass it on to them. So. Excellent. So what are you liking so far about tonight? I reckon it's good music and I really like that stuff, so go film with Titty Polly. Better than um, the skate club. Go better one! Release me, rock the beef one time. Come on, take me higher, take me higher, take me higher. Here is the cool generator. All right, Dempsey, what do you like so far about tonight? What's the best bit? Uh, the ramps and the music and stuff. What's your favourite move on the bike? Give us a, give us a show. Uh, my favourite move is called the So there you have it, youth group, not as boring as it appears to be. Stacks of fun, heaps of cool people, always a blast. Well Karina, what's our next story coming up? Jen, I recently caught up with the crazy oh my guy to find out just exactly what goes on in that mixed up brain of his. Well, here we are then. We're with Matt Parker, the Oh My Guy. How's it going, Matt? Pretty good. Yourself? Excellent. Marvellous. Now, where do you get the ideas for the stunts that you do? Um, pretty much there's two ways we come up with the ideas. First of all, we just think, what's the funniest thing we could do in a certain situation or with a certain object? So like with a bathtub, we go, what's the funniest thing we can do with this bathtub? And a lot of jokes just evolve like that. Otherwise, it's just us joking around, thinking, funny things and whenever you come up with a bizarre joke you think is there a way we can do this and yeah most of it just comes from whatever entertains us so why then do you do what you do because it entertains us mainly but there's pretty much a culture of people who go out and do crazy stunts like this and film them however a lot of them um, don't have much respect for other people or public property or pretty much anything so they go out and damage things and don't get permission for filming so we're trying to show people that you can go out and have a real laugh and pull practical jokes and do quite ridiculous things in public while still being respectful for everyone else and getting permission from the cinema if you're going to bust in there and film and um, just cleaning up bits of um, soapy water and cake after yourself so yeah, pretty much to show you can have a laugh while I'm um, being nice to you Probably the craziest moment from you from all the stunts that you did. The craziest moment. I think the bathtub counts as the craziest moment. Um, 
Yeah, because you are. You're, you're half naked in the bathtub in the city. So, But you reach a certain level of weirdness where you're, you're in the bathtub and you're like, it doesn't get any more bizarre than this. So you just go with it. So, But that's definitely the strangest thing we've done. And the most fun? The most fun. Um, I think the running with scissors was the most fun. Because I didn't have to do anything. I just got to stand back and go, yeah, I think if he ran that way and then turn like that with a giant pair of scissors, that would look quite entertaining. So that, that was just a laugh, yeah. Thanks for that, Matt. The Oh My segment certainly has provided us with heaps of laughs over the series. And sadly, guys, this is the last episode of the series while the sign falls down. <laughs> but we do have a couple of the crew here with us. Aaron, our director, Dan, hey. the stage hands. Hey, guys. Hey guys. And sadly, sadly, Jethro and Jess and the other hosts and heaps of the other crew couldn't be with us. But boy, have we had a great time with this series. Oh, yeah. Oh, we sure have. And I have some highlights of the first series for you right now, and they're going to take us out. out. Shank on the way we're headed So many more reasons to forget The way it picked me up I'm feeling like a reject I slide sleep at night Two times sleep to cry Two times wonder What do you think happens at church? What 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 are the things you think goes on? Well I've seen on the Simpson on the Simpsons a dude stands up and he like he speaks and the rest listen. About 211 youth groups from all around the state. They come from Geraldton, they come from Albany, they come from Esperance, they come from all over the city. Get together, massive time of celebration, uh, massive time where just all the Christians, like thousands, there'll be 5,000, 6,000 kids out there tonight. They get together, they have a, a, a huge uh, time praising, worshipping. That's, that's number one for me. Um, you know, my, my walk with God is my most important aspect of my life, so that's obviously going to come through, I hope, with my music. Uh, I came to the shed the first day that it started, and I've seen, I watched it grow, and it's just awesome to see what God's doing in this, in this house. It's just the best thing that has happened, I think, in the church. Um, the youth here, it's so on fire for God, it's just unreal. It's just awesome because it's just for God and everything. I think I worth fighting for. Don't get me wrong, this is not good night. When a couple of guys, they were up to no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight. My mom got scared. She said, You're moving in your uncle and uneven ballet. <laughs> I missed for a cab, and when it came near, the license plate was Dyson, there was Dyson in the mirror. If anything, I'd say that this cab was rare, but I said, Nah, forget it. You're home to Bel Air. <laughs> that camera is so close to my face. Okay. Miles it's miles away. Well, that's about it for today, guys. Thanks for joining in and watching the vibe. To take us out, we're going to see Jive Express. Dull. <laughs> Action. Well, that just about does it for another episode. Thanks for tuning into the vibe. Recently, thousands of young people turned up to the Perth Entertainment Centre for a youth live. <laughs> Don't open your eye! Don't we have Jive Express to take us out. out. Oh no, I left the hand down. Oh, 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 I was down the shop the other day and my mum was buying toilet paper. And, oh my gosh. Yeah! yeah. 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 No.
Well guys, that's it for the first series of The Vibe. It's been fun, hasn't it? And I just want to say thank you to all those people who've given up their own time to work in some way on the show. We couldn't have done it without you. But the biggest thank you of all goes out to my beautiful girlfriend, Janelle. Janelle, it would take a lifetime to repay the kind of love and support you've shown me over the last couple of years. But a lifetime is exactly what I'm willing to give. Janelle, will you marry me? Call CTV Perth soon to find out how you can become a part of this extraordinary do-it-yourself television opportunity.